it's a little bit later than usual, folks, but as ever, I provide you with a set of three answers to three questions you ask me each week, and it's an Edward Top Hat special, so let's get to the first question. Thoughts on the Thunderbirds 1965 project? I love it. I like the fact that they're able to take an audio adventure that was originally recorded onto vinyl LP some 50 years ago, and they're actually going to adapt it as a proper, full-functioning episode of the original series. It, it kind of bites that it's only going to be three episodes of the original series being produced brand new, but as we all come to know so well uh, these days, you know, be grateful for what you're given. Um, I'd like to think that the, I'd like to hope that there are more audio adventures so that the team that are behind it can actually produce more episodes, but that's just wishful thinking on my part, but yeah, I'm all for it. Question two, do you like Joe 19 UFO? I'm familiar with Joe 90, I've seen a few episodes, particularly in regards to when Joe's father happened to have the brain recordings of a secret agent and that would force that you know the team that they were investigating to allow Joe to operate on the patient because he had the brain recordings of a surgeon. I just like the like episodes where Joe's actually piloting different craft and you know having the knowledge to be able to do so. I thought it was a, a very intriguing idea of taking somebody's knowledge and experience and actually transferring it electronically into someone's brain and only being able to uh, use it via the use of these uh, specifically um, biomecular glasses to you know be able to let those brain waves out but then in turn if it's already recorded into the brain would they really need the glasses I'm just saying as for UFO I know of it but never seen an episode uh, just wasn't there to see it and third question which steam engine class engine is your favorite um, Somewhat partial to the A1s, mainly a large part because of Tornado. Um, I think that was what refueled or reignited or had my firebox relit, for uh, one way to put it. Because of the fact that engine was the first steam engine uh, built in 50 years, because everyone remembers the last steam engine produced was in the Swinton Works. Um, which was a 9F class in Evening Star. Now there had been a steam engine known by that class, by that name once before, but they felt since the curtain was coming down on the age of steam in the 60s, they just thought it was a very fitting tribute to call it Evening Star because a morning star shows the, the dawn and the rise of an age and an evening star shows the, the close of an age. So, uh, like I say, very partial to the A1 class because, as most people know, uh, Flying Scotsman was originally an A1 before it was converted to an A3 for reasons nobody really knows. Not to admit, not to my knowledge at least. Um, very somewhat partial to the Castle class that was produced in the Swinton Works, as every now and then I go and visit the Swinton Steam Museum, which I'll provide a link in the description if you're a railway fan, enthusiast, um, or just happen to have, you know, a passion for railways and the steam age, I suggest you go take a look in there. It's You're getting your money's worth and then some. And also, little known fact, particularly if you live out in, in the West Country, you can actually get 20% off your admission to the museum if you actually book your tickets through um, Great Western Railway. You just say, I'd like a return ticket to the Steam Museum. It pops up. There you go. You've got your ticket prepaid and you've got 20% off. It's also available on through First Great Western's website and the GWR website. So yeah, give that a good look. Um, yeah, getting off on a tangent. Um, 
like I say, Flying Scotsman um, and Tornado because there's something about that look of steam engines, I don't know why. Somewhat partial to Mallard as well, the A4 Pacific class. Um, many because those that watch Steam Days back in the day in uh, 1986 when the late Miles Kington produced and narrated that series. It's only like, um, I think, six episodes. And they haven't ever produced any follow-ups or the hit that I don't think it's ever been released on DVD. I mean, seriously, BBC, you really got some explaining to do on that one. Because that's a beloved series that really needs a you know a physical DVD release. Deserves it. Um and the Duchess of Hamilton, again, that was another engine that was featured on the show on um, Travels with the Duchess, which happened to be the very first episode going up the Settled to Carlisle line. A very uh, beloved railway route uh, for most uh, railway enthusiasts. And again, there's just something about steam engines. You know, there's something... You can't really put your finger on it. There's something quite majestic and... Magical, I don't want to go with that, but there's definitely a romantic side to the technology, you know, of, you know, of the way that the, that the, that these machines function, and it's a thing. What's the first image that comes into your mind when you think of a train? You think of a steam engine, you don't think of a diesel or an electric engine. Diesel and electrics may be uh, more efficient machines, technological-wise, but when you look at a steam engine, it's like... I want that one. I want that one. But yeah, A1 class and Tornado, but I've got a, a slight soft spot for the Castle class with Caffili Castle. And um, you know, I've done many videos uh, on Swindon Steam and Caffili Castle is one of those that feature and she's such a beautiful, fine British craftsmanship of steam, of steam and you know, engine engineering, if that's <laughs> if that's even the right term. It's the end of another episode. You know what to do by now. The if you're watching this on dynamicnight.com, Facebook, River City Gamers, or YouTube, question in the comment section below. And if you happen to be on Twitter, tweet me a question to my Twitter link in the outro. But until then, ask again.